Welcome mathematicians to this video. In today's video we'll be looking at simultaneous equations and how we use matrices to find solutions to simultaneous equations. So a bit of background first of all. As a mathematician you can solve the following equation. So we have 2x plus 4 equals 10. We can see that we've got one unknown the x and we've got one equation. This can be solved. We can work out a solution for x. Likewise I can solve these two equations because I've got two unknowns, an x and a y, and I have two equations. This can be solved as well. The general rule is as long as you have as many equations as unknowns, you can solve the problems. This arrangement where you have multiple unknowns and multiple equations is what we call simultaneous equations. So let's have a look at how we can use matrices to solve simultaneous equations. First of all, we need to be able to go from a simultaneous equation to a matrix. We need to be able to set them up correctly. So let's look at this example. This is our previous simultaneous equation that I had. So first of all, we're going to set up our matrix expression, and we're going to fill them in. So we start off with the x variable in the first column. So from the first equation, we've got a 3. We place a 3 in the first element. Second equation, we've got a 5, so we place a 5 in the first column as well. So the 3 and the 5 from the two equations, 1 and 2, get placed in the x column, the 3 and the 5. That makes sense. Logically, we go to the y's. So the first number in will be the 2, representing the y of the first equation. The second number with the 4, representing the y of the second equation. So x in the first column, y in the second column. We then put the variables x, y. Now hopefully this makes sense to people. If I was to rotate that across here to the top, we'd see that the x lines up with the 3's and 5's, and the y's line up in the same column with the 2's and 4's, which is what we need. We need the x to be aligned with the 3 and the 5, because that's what our equation states, and our y to be aligned with the 2 and the 4. So that's in the correct order. Finally, we have our last part, whereby in our last 2 by 1 matrix, we put in the values here, our totals, 36 and 64. That's the correct presentation of this pair of simultaneous equations. It's all good. In example number two, let's look at this particular pair of simultaneous equations and set these up using a matrix as well. So the same thing, here's our outline for our matrix. The x, we have a 7 as our first entry, and a 5 fills up the first column of our first matrix. This, by the way, can be described as the coefficient matrix. It's the numbers in front of the x and the y's. The second column is the y's. Now, this may not look obvious, but when I've got a plus y, that's effectively an invisible plus 1y, so we put in a 1. The next one is a minus y, or if you like, a minus 1. So we put in a minus 1. Okay, so we have numbers in front of our variables x and y's, unless it's a single one. For example, y represents 1y, and minus y represents minus 1y. Again, x and y's are placed in. Again, if we were to slide these out of this set of brackets and to the left, we'd have the x aligned with the 7 and 5, and the y aligned with the 1 and minus 1. So that's in the correct order. Really important, if we place those in the wrong position, we can't use our matrices effectively to find a solution. Again, the 25 goes in the top, it's the first equation, and 11 goes in the bottom, that's the second equation. So that's our correct representation of the simultaneous equation, 7x plus y equals 25, and 5x take y equals 11 in a matrix format. Okay, now we're looking at how we can use these matrices expressions to solve a set of simultaneous equations. So let's look at the step for this. Here's our general formula. So matrix A is known as a coefficient matrix. It's the numbers in front of the x and y's. Matrix X is the unknown variable matrix. That's what we're trying to solve. We're going to get some values for x and y. And matrix B is known as the total matrix, or the end result, the 36 and the 64. There is a general rule we can use that allows us to step straight to the solution. When we have a coefficient multiplied by an unknown giving us a total, we can use this particular arrangement to find our solution. The unknown will be equal to the inverse A to the negative 1, the inverse matrix A multiplied by B in that particular order. So we sub in our values. Here's matrix A, raised to the negative 1, that's the inverse, and we're multiplying it by our total matrix of 36 and 64. We do that in our calculator, and we end up with the answer of 8 and 6. Just a bit of a recap on that, to make certain we understand the steps. How we go from this general format to our solution format. Let's have a look. We'll start with the same matrix. If I were to multiply both sides by the inverse of this 3, 2, 5, 4. Okay, so I've multiplied it by the inverse on the left-hand side. And the same on the right-hand side of the equals arrow. I've multiplied both sides by the inverse of this coefficient matrix A. Okay, let's look at this using our TI-CAS calculator. 
we'll sub in our values for our inverse matrix and we'll multiply it to our regular matrix a to the negative one multiplied by a the inverse of a multiplied by a will give me the identity matrix and identity matrix looks like this when you multiply any matrix by its inverse you will get the identity matrix and let's look what happens when we multiply the unknown matrix by the identity matrix As can be seen, when we multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, it returns itself. Effectively, it's like multiplying this particular unknown matrix by 1. So now we're left with the unknown matrix is the inverse of A multiplied by the total matrix. And so that fits this particular pattern that we had earlier. So if we're trying to find X the unknown matrix, and we know A and we know B, we can rearrange X the unknown is the inverse of A times B. That's the process of how we get to this point. Then finally, of course, the calculation shows that the unknown matrix XY has the values 8 and 6. Let's look at our second example. So here's our starting matrix that we've set up. Again, we're using the general formula, the coefficient matrix, multiplied by the unknown variable matrix, is equal to the total matrix B. And using that particular formula, we know as a shortcut to find the unknown matrix x, we take the inverse of a, same numbers, 7, 1, 5, negative 1, all to the power of negative 1, and multiply that by our total matrix b. When we do that, we get an answer of 3 and 4, a lot quicker using the shortcut. But it's important to understand why we use that particular formula. Let's now have a look at the following equations. I'll ask you guys to try these. Let's try example number 1 first of all. Pause now and come back when you're ready to check out the solutions. Okay, let's have a look. Here's our general format. A, the coefficient matrix, multiplied by the unknown, equals B, the total matrix. So we've got our values here, all set out nicely. Next, to find the solution, we use the format. The unknown matrix will be the inverse of A times B. So following the formula, here we go. We multiply the inverse of A by B. So we have 3 minus 2, 5, 3 to the power of negative 1 by minus 5 and 17, and we get the answer of 1 and 4. Let's have a go at number two. Pause now and try. Okay, let's have a look at this particular example. Have people already found the abnormality with this? Our numbers aren't aligned. Our X and Ys are in different positions. That can catch people out. So if we have a look, no, X and Y, we can't have them in different spots when we write these into a matrix. And our Y and X are in the wrong spot. They're not matching. So we can rearrange that. Where we had minus 4X, and the 2y, we can put the minus 4x at the front and the plus 2y at the back. Now we've got our x's lined up and we've got our y's lined up and we can go about solving this. So first of all, let's set up our matrix. 2, 1, minus 4, 2, unknown x, y, and our total of 9, 2. We can use the general formula here to work out the unknown value x with the inverse of a times b, put our numbers in, and we get an answer of x equals 2 and y equals 5. Our final one, let's try this. Pause now if you like, and we'll have a look at the answers in a second. Okay, now this one's a little bit tricky as well, because we've got x, y's, and z's. We've got three variables, which means when we actually do a coefficient matrix, we need to have a 3 by 3 to be able to work out the inverse. So effectively, we have to expand these out. So the x and y, we have 1x, 1y, and effectively 0 z's in that equation, an unwritten 0 z. This one, the y and the z, means we've got no x's, 1y and 1z. And this equation, x and z, means we've got 1x, no y, and 1z. When we rewrite these out, including the zeros, the elements that aren't shown in our equations, we can suddenly use this particular matrix for the x, y's, and the z's. Okay, so the 1, 1, and 0 is a 1, 1, and 0. Second equation, the 0, 1, 1, represents a 0, 1, 1. Third equation, 1, 0, 1, gives me a 1, 0, 1. Very good. And of course, we use the following equation when we've got our unknown in the middle and matrix A to the left and matrix B to the right, we can find the unknown matrix by using the inverse of A and multiplying it by B. We do this and we find the answer for X, Y, and Z for these equations is simply 1, 2, 3. My final two examples are worded ones. Sometimes these are tricky for students. Let's have a look at this. A farmer looks over his property and notices he has a collection of emus and horses in one paddock. Randomly, he counts a total of 15 heads in the paddock and he also counts a total of 50 legs in the paddock. 
question he has is how many individual emus and horses are there in the paddock? So you can try this yourself, see if you can work this out. I'll give you the tip, you need to create a set of simultaneous equations and then solve them using the matrices. Pause now and try if you like. Step one, let's create a pair of simultaneous equations. So first of all, we consider the total number of heads in the paddock. Well, the number is 15 and it's equal to the number of emu heads plus the number of horse heads. Next, let's consider the total number of legs in the paddock. It's equal to 50. And we know that for every emu, there's two legs because they're a two-legged bird. And for every horse, there's four legs. Okay, so we have an equation here for the number of legs. Two lots of the number of emus plus four lots of the number of horses will equal 50. Here's our two simultaneous equations from the data given. Step two, let's reconstruct these and set up a matrix equation. So here we have 1e e and 2e e in the first column. 1h and 4h in the second column. E and h in the correct order is equal to 15 and 50 in the format of a times x equals b. So to find the unknown x, we take the inverse of a and multiply it by b. We do that and we end up with e h, the unknown matrix, is 5 and 10, which means we've got 5 emus and 10 horses. Let's check these out. Here we have e plus h equals 15. Let's sub in 5 plus 10. Yep, that equals 15. 2e plus 4h equals 50. Let's sub that in. 2 lots of 5 is 10, plus 4 lots of 10 is 40. 10 and 40 is 50. That's correct as well. So in the end of this, we ended up having 5 emus and 10 horses in the paddock. A final example number 2. Jenny watches a match of AFL, but it's not the Australian Football League. Rather, it's the Albanian Football League. The Albanian Football League is identical to the Australian Football League, with one exception. Their goals and behinds have different values to our traditional 6 and 1 points respectively. At the end of the match, the scores were as follows. The Cats had 10 goals, 5 behinds for a total of 110 points, whereas the Dogs had 8 goals, 2 behinds for a total of 84 points. Now the question is, what is a goal and a behind worth in the Albanian Football League? Step 1, we wish to create a pair of simultaneous equations. So, from the Cats score, we have 10 Gs, 10 goals, plus 5 Bs, 5 behinds, gives us a total of 110 points. The dog score line, 8 Gs, 8 goals, plus 2 Bs, 2 behinds, equals a total of 84. So G represents the number of goals and B the number of behinds. So here we have our simultaneous equations. Let's now set this up as a matrix multiplication. So our G column first, 10 and 8, yes, they're both Gs, 10 and 8 in the first column, 5 and 2 for the behinds in the second column. Now if we were to move those over from a vertical to a horizontal, yes, the G would come first and then the B there in the correct order. And in the end, our total scores were 110 and 84, respectively. So here's our format. A times X equals B. We want to find the unknown X. So to find the unknown X, I'm going to take the inverse of A and multiply it by B. Here's our values, and we can end up with an answer that the unknown matrix GB is 10 and 2. So that tells us that every goal is worth 10 points and every behind is worth 2 in the Albanian Football League. Let's check our answers. The CAT score, 10 goals and 5 behinds, was 110. So 10 lots of 10 is 100, and 5 lots of 2 is 10, is 110, that's correct. And in terms of the dog score, we had 8 goals and 2 behinds equals 84. So 8 tens is 80, plus 2 lots of 2 is 4, equals 84, it's correct. So at the end of the day, our answer is a goal is worth 10 points, and a behind is worth 2 points. I hope this video has helped explain how we can use matrices to solve simultaneous equations. I hope it's explained how to set them up, and how to use the inverse matrix of a function to find a solution. As always, I'd appreciate it if you could like, share, comment, and subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching.